everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And what on earth might I be up to? I am end plying or chain plying some yarn to dye in today's episode of Dye Pot PS. That's right, you guys asked me to dye some hand spun yarn. So I first created these Z singles out of Knit Picks Full Circle Roving. This was a limited edition roving from a few years ago, which is now discontinued. Um, and I am now plying these sing singles because, to be honest, I'm a little nervous about potentially dyeing my hand spun singles. I feel like they're a little delicate and that we'd risk breaking. But an end plied yarn or a two ply or any kind of ply yarn gives it a lot more strength. And so I think that. Uh, we will have some fun dyeing this. But first, I need to finish up the spinning. And then we will plan out exactly how we want to add color to this yarn. Look at this beautiful end ply hand spun yarn. Ready, just ready to be over dyed. I am loving my skein winder even more. Um, I still need to check the width of this skein, but I had 72 wraps directly from the bobbin onto the skein winder. I wanted to show this in case you ever wondered why it is important to set the twist on hand spun yarns. I have a twist in these plies and when I take it off the skein winder it starts to twist up on itself, but this is something that is easily fixed with some water. And I could either uh, wet it to set the twist and then let it dry, or I can wet it so that way we can dye it. I am letting the skein soak in just some plain tap water. You can see that it's still a little curled up, but the fibers are starting to relax a little bit. In my steam pan, I have eight cups of water and I'm adding one tablespoon of white vinegar. My plan is to layer different drops of food coloring on top of our yarn um, to create sort of like a deep, variegated tonal, well not quite tonal, but the, hopefully they'll all be deep tones. And I think you'll really like the colors that I'm going to go for. I have my pre-soaked fiber that's still a little bit twisty, but overall is a little better than it was. And here are both of the ties. I did put um, a zip tie on this to sort of help um, help keep things together in case, especially in case these ties fall apart. But yeah, you can see that there's a lot of water space left in the pan, but um, I think that we can still get some really lovely coverage on it. I'm now going to start heating this under medium heat and yeah, I'll be back when it's hot. So as I said, I want to layer on a few different food coloring colors and I'm going to be using some colors from the Wilton Colorite Performance Color System. And I'm going to start with the base pink, which is just red number three. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten. That one will spread out a bit more. Um, Alright, I have put that in. I know that this will strike in general pretty quickly, um, but I am going to help it spread out a tiny bit is one of the reasons why I let myself go for this water out here. Now, and I'm reducing the heat to low. Now this yarn is 100% wool. It does have a high twist, so a little bit lower surface area than say maybe wool of the Andes, um, but I still expect these pinks to strike faster than some other colors. Um, but Anyway, I am going to leave this for 
um, a few minutes until we have absorbed all of these pinks and then we will do the next color. After five minutes, um, there's still a fair amount of pink in the pot. It started clearing, because we know those reds love to be fast in some other areas. Um, but I'm gonna just go ahead and sort of like swish uh, this around, so that way we can absorb a little more of this. I wonder how yeah, the water is hot, but not too, too hot. So I am going to give this another five minutes, and then we will be back. Uh, it has been, I guess, a total of ten minutes. I have to say, I'm a little shocked there's still some pink in there. But you can see I'm now sort of swirling it through, giving more fiber a chance, and that, that took care of it. <laughs> Uh, the only pink that we see left is uh, sort of like a reflection on here. The next color that we are going to add is the base black. And this one uh, has, I think, a little bit of everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, let's go for nine. As I am helping this color spread out a bit, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Ada Lai, Karen Siegel, and the other Fiber patrons. You will see some of their names going across the screen now. Uh, Patreon is a platform that connects fans with the creators that they enjoy. And in exchange for support, you can get cool perks, such as a shout out in a video like this, early access to new yarn dyeing videos, and more. So patrons, thank you so, so much for all of your support. Interesting. I'm like taking some of these runoff colors and sort of slowly adding little bits of it onto some of these areas. Uh, I think that this is looking really cool so far. And now I'm going to go ahead and give this, oh, 10 minutes to absorb, and then we're going to come back and add our final color. I should also add that the low amount of vinegar that we have in here makes it possible for these colors to spread out. If I had started with, say, three tablespoons of vinegar instead of just one, um, the pinks would have struck a lot faster, as would some of these tones in the black. But things are, you know, somewhat condensed, and oh, we're starting to see some of those blues in the center, but some reds are sort of coming through as I uh, sort of shift this around so we can pick up some of these tones. I was going to leave it, I promise, but, you know, I couldn't help myself. All right, well, this is cool looking. It almost looks like we have three different colors here. Uh, we've got, oh, I guess that is looking kind of blue, too. I don't know why it's looking a little more red over there, but overall, there's still some reds in here, but there's also a lot of blue that is left behind. So what I am going to do now um, is I'm going to go ahead and add a little more vinegar. I am going to add three tablespoons. One, two, three tablespoons of the white vinegar. Um, because again, the amount of twist the amount of um, food coloring in here, those are all things that can um, sort of slow down some color absorption. But don't worry, we are still not quite done with this look. So I am going to, and you can see after adding that vinegar, all those reds shoot <laughs> into the yarn. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this, I think, um, 
uh, five, ten minutes, maybe ten minutes, and then we'll come back for the next color. There is still some blue left in there. That's okay, because I'm about to add a lot more. I now have the base blue, which is just blue number one. And I think I'm going to do... Seven, eight. Uh oh, am I nearing the end? Nine, ten. Ah! Some of those may not have been full drops, I think. Oh no! Let's see if I can. All right, we might be at the end of this bottle. Um, but you can see just how pigmented like even these like two little drops are compared to what we had left behind. So looking for my where my droppies at. I actually do have some more of this, so if um think I want some more I can go grab some more interesting okay I am feeling all right I have added some of that color and now you're seeing like there, there is some color variation, but what I'm doing is something that is overall fairly, fairly subtle. Um, but I am going to let this go for 10 minutes. We're still on really low heat. This bottle is tapped. Maybe I'll add some water into the bottle to get some of that residual color out, um, but we'll move things around in about 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. There's a lot of blue left. But we also have a lot of color in our yarn. And ooh, look at some of those blues. I'm trying to like shift the point of this doohickey around. I know in some areas it looks a little dark and almost like monochromatic here, but. I think that's because of the way that like I'm layering some of this color on and ultimately I think that uh, we will have some really really nice uh, effects like I see some of some of the blue some more pinks some purples it's subtle it's dark and um, I am getting pretty excited uh, but goodness do I want to add more blue? Hmm. I just added some water to this container. Um, and so this is no longer um, mega concentrated base blue, but all right, that gave us like a little rinse out of the bottle, probably equivalent to Oh, two to three more drops, maybe. We'll see. But you can also see that the um, total amount of color has really gone up again. Um, and, ooh, I am excited as I, like, scoop the color in. Okay, I'm going to let this, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. There we go. Actually, turn it back down. I'm um, gonna we'll now let this sit for 10 minutes. I know on camera you might not be able to see some of these uh, tones in here very well with the light reflecting, but um, I I think that it'll be even more um, impactful and apparent once this is dry. It had been 10 minutes, and once again, I'm sort of flopping this over, and ooh, this is dark and pigmented and awesome. 
Um, awesome, awesome. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a tiny bit more, well, tiny bit. I'm gonna add another three tablespoons of vinegar. And I'm also cranking up the heat for a moment. So we've got one, two, three. And to help mix that vinegar around, I am just sort of lifting this up. All things considered, that amount of blue left is not a ton given the amount of water that we have, but oh dear, I hope I haven't tangled this. Um, <laughs> good thing for this tie. Um, but I'm going to let this heat be a little higher for um, about five minutes and then I will be back. All right, those five minutes we got at a really nice bubble and I'm now turning off the heat completely. There is still, you know, a fair amount of blue in here. You see as I move it. Um, but uh, overall, actually, some of this is starting to clear um, and give us a really deep, rich, pigmented look. I have moved this yarn around a lot in here. Hopefully, uh, I won't regret that at all. Oh, fun. Looks like we've got some like resist points from where it might have been like twisted, but um, I am mega, mega excited. And I know that now as we cool, um, we will absorb, I think, a lot more of those blues. After a couple of hours, the basin is completely cool. And the water isn't 100% clear, but it's, there's not a lot of detectable color in there. I think it's a little hard to see the colors in this light, but we've got reds and blues and purples and this beautiful deep and dark and saturated way. So, since we've absorbed almost all of the color that we care about, let's go and wash this. This yarn is dark and saturated. And ugh, I know it'll brighten a bit as it dries, but I am really, really happy to have achieved this with food coloring. Um, yeah, there is some a bit, it looks like there's a bit of glazing almost on some of these strands as well because there's some areas where the color struck um, on the outer surface but didn't necessarily penetrate. And I always think that that is fun and cool. Now you might wonder why I didn't sort of go into my comfort zone and just break what was violet on this yarn. And we're seeing a little bit of blue then, which is a little bit of what I expected. <laughs> this is really saturated. I did not go straight for breaking molten violet on this hand spun because I wanted to try to achieve something a little more subtle and a little more saturated on this hand spun yarn. The project as a whole took a little while to dye the fiber, but given that it also took a while and took some hours to spin the fiber, I think that that amount of time is worth it. I'm adding a little bit of clear dish soap, um, which sometimes helps. I mean, the amount of bleeding is so low that I, uh, once I'm done rinsing this, um, rinsing the soap back out, I will probably let it ride. But I have a feeling that if I dye some hand spun yarn again, I might do some broken violet on it. But just like when you're dyeing yarn with any other kind of colorway, the results will vary based on the fiber type and the twist. And that the same goes for hand spun. It's just um, you have another level of control over the fiber. And while in general I probably would have preferred to create this kind of colorway on roving, I think it might have been a little harder for me to get it quite this saturated and have and I think it might be a little hard for me to get colors quite this saturated and penetrate um, all of the fibers so deeply on roving 
uh, without risking like doing any felting. But uh, I am really excited to see what this looks like when it dries. I'm gonna go ahead and do, I think, two or three more rinses and then hang this up to dry. You guys, this yarn is amazing. And I am wondering why I don't have more of it. I am sort of kicking myself that when I spin, well, first of all, that this is an N-ply yarn, which means that the singles that I spun were more than divided by three from the plying, but also that it's only 100 grams. I'm not really good at getting a lot of yardage out of 100 grams yet, but oh, someday. But these colors are spectacular. We have this variegated, non-repeating, tonal colorway that almost feels like it's glazed in the purple in sections. And if I sort of unspin the plies a bit, you can see that these reds did strike really shallowly, shallowly onto the yarn. And we added so much of these other tones that they sort it has a very tonal feel, but there's definitely warm and cool tones within it. There are some places where we have some like sort of white, almost white specks because of some of the ways that um, there was still the high twist and so colors didn't really get in those sections. And there's also a tiny bit of bright um, behind this tie. But overall, I think that the color penetration is spot on. And oh, I am thrilled, thrilled with this. I shared a dip to dyed video earlier this month where I created a colorway with very similar colors, mixing the base pink, black, and blue, and then dip dyeing. And so you can see that sort of like at their extremes, those are the shades that we put together in this yarn. But by layering them in this way and still allowing I guess it wasn't one mixture, so it wasn't necessarily breaking apart, even though some breaking definitely happened. Uh, we got something that is very complementary, but still is a different and like darker feel to it. Today's video is about dyeing some hand spun yarn. And I definitely did that. I'm not sure if I am so in love with this yarn because of the hand spun base or because of the technique and how I layered the colors. Uh, this was 100% wool, non-superwash, so the colors struck pretty slowly, which allowed us to get this really deep penetration. I wonder if I were to choose another high twist yarn um, and you know maybe like Hawthorne or something and did the same dye technique if I would get a colorway that I was just as excited about or if it really is something about the yarn itself that I spun. Now granted, I think the yarn that I spun is stunning and lovely and beautiful, so I don't have anything against that per se, but I think ultimately the technique that I used to apply the color to the yarn really does fit the hand spun nicely. I wanted to create something non-repeating on this hand spun because for me, even if I'm doing something that is somewhat repeating through applying, you know, none of the color repeats are ever the same length and there's still some uniqueness to it. And I think that this kind of randomly applying the color and letting it absorb and then adding the next really does give some of that random feel to it. I am not sure if I were to do this technique with this amount of dye on roving, if I would get this level of color penetration. Uh, it's possible that there would still be some white behind and I'd end up with some paler colors. I definitely need to try to go and explore uh, dyeing roving with these um, deep, deep saturated colors. This zip tie is completely removable and reusable. I am just leaving it on for now. Um, because it helps me just keep the yarn from getting too twisted. Chemnitz patrons, thank you so much for your continued support of the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I truly value your feedback, uh, your questions, your, your, your criticisms, and all of it. And I strive to continue to make 
fun, exciting, and unique videos. If you are not currently a Chemnitz patron and you would like to learn more, you can find a link both in the video description and the iCard. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.